Hey guys, this is Stu. Uh, just doing another inbox review for you. This time it's of an aircraft, other than armour. Um, it's an aircraft I've actually been waiting to be released in injection moulded form for many, many years. It is, of course, the Ferry Gannett AW3. It was one of the last conventional early, airborne early warning aircraft used in the fleet air arm and disturbed, well, actually served distinguishedly with, from around about 1961 until the retirement of our last conventional aircraft carrier, Ark Royal 4, in 1978. And then the last squadron to have it, 849, was disbanded six months later in 1979. Um, I want to make an apology, uh, first off, before I do this inbox review. When I did my monthly update around about three weeks ago and went through my acquisitions, I was a bit of a plum and I omitted to mention this one. So, Nikki Ward at Veteranus Kits, if you're watching, hun, I do apologise. So, I hope this inbox review makes up for it. If you want to always source good kits, uh, I would suggest you get to Veteranus Kits. She also has a Facebook page and often comes up with very good deals on kits. Service is second to none. Um, I asked her if she would keep one by for me and bless her. She let me know as soon as they were in and she kept it by for me until payday. So thank you again, Nikki. It's much appreciated. Um, getting back to the aircraft. Um, as I say, it was the last um, sort of turboprop aircraft used in the fleet air arms inventory um, back in 1978. And um, as I say, she the aircraft were retired uh, around about 79, six months after Art Royal was paid off. And the last one I flew, I think, flew in around about 1980. However, someone over in the States has actually got one flying again, um, I'm glad to say. And uh, I have heard rumours they may possibly fly over one year for the air show circuit over here. That would be absolutely superb. Um, but as I say, I've been waiting for an injection moulded kit for this to come through until this happened. Um, the only way you could actually get one of these in your stash was to get an old conversion set in resin or basically a vac form kit. I'm glad to say that we do now have a, a resin one and it's actually supplied by a Czech company called Sword who recently did a series of twin seat harriers and I have to say I wouldn't mind getting my hands on one of them. Um... It is a limited run kit, so if you want to get hold of one, I get, suggest you get in touch with Nikki. Either that or get onto eBay, uh, because they'll probably more than likely be there, because it is a limited run, and because it's an unusual aircraft, and it's injection moulded, they'll go quick. I certainly was glad and lucky to get mine. Anyway, without further ado, we get on with the review. As you can see on the box art, it's depicting a gannet coming into land on the actual carrier deck of Art Royal about to hook a wire. Um, and then on the side, you've got the same illustration again, and the kit number on this, in case you want to see if you can get hold of one, is SW72088. Now if you want to pause that, by all means do. Okay. There's a little bit of information about the kit on the side in four different languages. And then on the back, you've got two examples of the Gannet, uh, both on from 849. The first one here is of an earlier example, around about circa 1963 on Hermes. And then obviously the last flight to have them on Art Royal in 78, with the familiar beehive markings, which is the one I'll be doing. It's a side opening box. And all the sprues are in one bag, obviously, and along with the instruction sheet and the etched brass. The good thing I do like about this is the fact you've got a resealable bag, so it's easy to access the goods. Right, so let's get everything out. There we go. Right. Okay, I'll just put that down there. And get the instruction manual out, and I've just run through that. Right, you've got the familiar box art at the top of the page, on the first page of the pamphlet, then a little illustration, uh, well, little history about the aircraft, as you can see there. First stage is all the sprue trees, which you can see there, so check you've got everything in the kit box, including the etched brass set. 
And the first stage of the assembly is obviously the control column, whereby you've got the actual brass column and then the film that goes on the back, okay, which you apply to the actual column itself. There isn't any colour call outs in this, but I would suggest you go and do some research on that, okay. First off, you've got the construction stage of the office itself, the cockpit, as you can see there. Okay, I'll just leave it there for you to have a little browse at. And as you can see, the actual um, kit includes seat belts, which I think is part of the edge brass set. Okay, next up, if I take the decal sheet out, fuselage halves go together along with the assembled cockpit, which you button up, and on also the undercarriage bay. Then you basically add the air intake into onto the fuselage along with the double propellers and the nose of the propeller. And also the cockpit canopy there which also has a windscreen wiper, so nice touch. Then on the back of the fuselage you add the glass to the radar crew members hatch. Then radio arrays go on the top of the fuselage along with the air intakes at the side and then it's the assembly of the tailplanes with the canards also. Uh, the next stage after that you add the tailplanes to the fuselage and then you assemble the wings and the undercarriage bays as is detailed there. Okay. Next you put the actual, you assemble the undercarriage legs which go into the wing undercarriage bays and then add the fuel tanks either side. Then you add the air inlets and exhaust um, on the actual gannet which is a completely different design to the ASW version and far shorter. And then you add radar array to the bottom of the fuselage along with the tail hook and then also more radar arrays on each side on the top and the bottom of each wing and then you add the basic landing lights and wing tips as well okay then you go on to the nose gear bay whereby you add the you assemble the nose wheel and add that to the nose bay as well and then underneath it gives you an indication of how it should be sitting okay Last but not least, you've got the map of all the stencils, where they go on the fuselage, and there's quite a few, I have to say, guys. And then you add the whip aerials, as indicated, onto the fuselage at the end. Okay. And then, obviously, you've got your colour call-outs right here. Okay. And then it shows you at the back of the pamphlet all the other kits you can get in the range. And I have to say, I wouldn't mind getting all that lightning. That does really appeal to me. Right, let's put that in the bag. There we go, and then we get on to the crux of the matter, the actual kit itself. First off, you've got all the etched brass details, the cockpit and the actual seat belts, etc. As you can see there, and there's a little leaflet inside to tell you how to apply it all. Okay, that's that. And the nice little touch is you've got the cockpit canopy in its own little bag. Now I'm going to take it out so we can just see how nice and clear this is. And for a limited run kit, it is superb, I have to say. So here we go. There you go. You've got the window lights for the radar hat, uh, radar operator's hatch, the main canopy, which is not bad, I have to say. I might dip it in some clear. But the panel lines are nicely detailed so it'll be easy to mask and then obviously you've got the landing light uh, glass there as well so that's nicely done put that back in the bag so i don't lose it and reseal that there we go put that inside and then you get two sprues first off you've got the fuse large halves here and it being a, a limited run kit unfortunately guys you've got raised panel lines so it is going to be a case of sanding it down and basically rescribing but i have to say it's very well detailed considering this is a limited run kit as you can see here okay not much detail on the inside but as i say you will be building that up so you needn't worry and there's the cockpit floor as you can see here 
and then moving down you've got the undercarriage bay here now that is nicely detailed and that will come up beautifully with a wash also a nice little touch on the actual cockpit seat you've even got the cushion there look superb and not much detail on the wheels i'm afraid guys so i might source some aftermarket ones and they're not even weighted but as i say this is a limited run kit also with the undercarriage as well the nose wheel bay there's not much detail i might put a little bit of wire on here just to give it some detail there you go so that's the first sprue pop that back in And then we come on to the last sprue, which is the wings, the undercarriage and undercarriage bays, etc. And then you've obviously got the tanks here as well. Again, unfortunately, we've got raised panel details, so that's going to have to be rescribed. But not bad, say the less, say the least. Okay, I'll just run that through here so you can see all the parts. Again, the undercarriage legs, I might add some wiring to that for the brake cables, etc right but what i do like is the undercarriage bays and the wings are very nicely detailed but i might add a little bit more wiring in that still we'll see and then lastly you've got those wheel bay doors there very nicely detailed i have to say okay so basically that is the sword aew gannet mark three um as i say it is a limited run kit what do I think of it? Yeah, it's probably going to build a nice one. It's going to need a little bit of work to it. The raised panel lines, I don't like. So, sword, if you're watching, make note. Have them recessed. Makes life a lot easier for us modellers. Oh, one thing I did forget. Decal sheet. Here you go. There's all your stenciling, as you can see here, which will keep you busy. And then you've got the familiar markings. A little bit shiny on the decals. Being Eastern Market, mm, I'm a bit dubious about them, but we'll see. Um, if anybody's had any bad reactions, please let me know. Because um, I may well get an aftermarket set of decals just to back myself up, really. But as I said, that is the Sword AEW Gannet Mark III. If you want to get hold of one of these, I suggest you get hold of them quick. I was very lucky in the fact that Nikki had actually slipped some through when they were released. But it's a very highly sought after kit, no doubt. And one you could add very much into your fleet air arm collection. It's one that I've always wanted and I'm glad I've got it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the review. Um, that's it for now guys. So until then, get kit crazy, happy modelling and I'll see you on the next one.